are Ham Radio. Hey everybody, it's Mike. N2MA. Why did I say that? I don't, I don't get it. Hey everybody, it's Freddie Mac, K85FMU, your Ham Radio Crusader, and I'm here with a new video about a couple of different things. You know I've been playing with ASL3 a lot, and I've learned a few customizations in Almon 3, a few customizations in Supermon, but I'll show you a few of those in Almon 3. Jeff, K3JRZ over at K3JRZ on the, on the air, Super Pota guy, he's, he's probably going to help us out with that uh, Supermon customizations coming in the near future. But I wanted to show you a little thing today called the Hotspot Radius HSR Mini Repeater. Outstanding little device. A few other little things along the way. Hey, it's an ASL3 day to me. <laughs> Nonetheless, it's some pretty neat stuff. So, hey, let's take a look. So how many of y'all have seen this little gem? Look familiar? Yes? No? Maybe? This is the hotspotradios.com HSR repeater. It has two SA818 chips on it. One for transmit, one for receive. It's a full duplex repeater, y'all, and it's one watt. K85 FMU, testing one, two, three. You could see as I keyed up, it was already transmitting. If it was a simplex node, it wouldn't transmit until I'm done talking. So, me keying up. Unkey. Ain't that something? So, let's see if I can make it hook up to the parrot node. Three, five, 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 three. Node five. Five, 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 three, connected to node five, seven, six, three, three, one. KD5 FMU testing one, two, three. Audio level is pretty good. KD5 FMU testing one, two, three. How about that, y'all? I just love this thing. It's pretty stinking neat, and it's aesthetically pleasing. We're in the dark right now because I wanted to show you the blue LED that's under it. And it glows around the edge, so it makes it really aesthetically pleasing. I'll zoom out a little bit. Yes, it's connected via a USB cable over to the Raspberry Pi, which is running ASL3, of course. So, what does it look like in the light? Now there it is. Look how thin it is. There's your antennas. SMA female, SMA male. If it'll fit down in these grooves far enough, I may put an extension on these and put higher gain antennas on them. Maybe even spread them apart. I guess if you wanted to, you could put a set of duplexers on it, but it's only one watt, so you don't have a lot of descents there. What's this right here, you ask? Well, let me turn it off and I'll show you. Okay, so this nifty little device has a programming toggle switch right here. And all that really does is allow you to, when it's toggled to the left, you can see, you may or may not can see, the little letters next to prog, it says TX. This side says RX. This is marked RX, this is marked TX. So you know which one's which, right? So when you are programming a Shari Pi or a Hotspot Radio SA818 chip through ASL3 software or the Hamvoip software, it'll work with both. You run the little program and you tr program the transmit and the receive all at one fail swoop. Well, this is a fully duplex one. So when you're programming the transmitter, you toggle it over to the transmit side and then you program this. You exit the SA818 software or programming software, program, toggle it to the right, and then you run it again to program the, the receive side. Well, how do you program it? Well, I'm glad you asked that because this USB cable that comes with it has a flip side that says program. It has to be in that position before you program the transmit and the receive. I did it in like five minutes. I, I bet it wasn't even that long. 
And you also got a PTT light and a carrier operated relay site, which means it detects cause. And then you've got an activity light, which is your heartbeat. It will blink green. I think the core light may be disabled in the software by default, but if you need to be able to detect that in an LED form, there's a line of code I think that will take care of that. But once you have it programmed, you have to take this C-type cable. It's a special C-type cable. Flip it back, plug it back in, and then fire up your Raspberry Pi, and it will auto-load the, uh, the operating system. There's that activity light, which once the software, once the uh, ASL3 software gets booted good, it will start heart beating to let you know that it's talking to the Raspberry Pi software just fine, and there it is. And then we can grab our walkie and conduct a little test. K85 FMU, testing one, two, three. Pretty cool stuff. You may have seen my auto patch video recently. If not, it'll be linked in, the, in this video as well. But I used this for the auto patch software because it's full duplex. Your regular single radio node, which we call a hotspot node or a simplex node, cannot transmit and receive at the same time per se. So it's called a semi-half duplex. So as it said at the moment of that video, you could only use one of these both ways if you called in to your if you called into your all-star node through the uh, auto patch software and i think all you could hear is the person on the radio or something there was there was part of that that didn't work but i'm pretty sure they have that worked out at asl so that auto patch will work on a simplex node as well but i'm not 100 percent sure about that but i think they may have it worked out with an update coming soon so hey let's let's see what happens i always like to give folks the benefit of the doubt the auto patch configuration has all always been in the all-star link software and the ham voip if i'm not mistaken and a lot of folks utilize that for sip phones and things like that but the auto patch is pretty stinking cool I mean, it doesn't have a, the same practical application as it did back in the 80s and 90s, but uh, it'll give you some control over it that you didn't have before. But I wanted to show you guys this. The case is made by a familiar name, clabs.com, made in the USA. Pretty stinking good case. It's got some little feet on it. There's uh, some clearance room for the antennas here. I guess you could if you wanted to really get down into it. Put on longer studs or different connections but i mean why would you want to marshall and the guys over at hotspot radios has got it going on this is a stinking neat addition to your all-star family this is most likely going to end up in my truck i can't make up my mind yet hmm we'll just have to see because i haven't felt it get hot at all and i i do nets and stuff with it so so here i am in the almond three page of that same duplex node from hotspotradios.com and as you can see i'm connected up to my hub right now and it's just as easy to disconnect but you gotta log in first and i'm logged in you can see i labeled it as the hsr mini repeater from oklahoma Anyway, it's connected and we can take a look at the bubble chart and you can see that this node is connected into my Ham Radio Crusader Cloud Hub, which is also connected to my repeater in Preston, Oklahoma, and that is the private node for that repeater. That represents my DMR bridge from the DB switch server inside of that all-star node. And I keep it connected at most generally to the uh, KC5HWB Ham Radio 2.0 hub out of Grapevine, Texas. Down here we have that Merrimack, New Hampshire, who's connected up to Londonderry, New Hampshire, as well as Milford, New Hampshire. And that is Eric, N1JUR. He is part of the Tuesday, Thursday night uh, Ham, Radio Ham Radio video premiere group that I'm part of with a bunch of other great guys. Well, so what if you wanted to add some links over here on this side? Let me show you something real quick. This is the Almond 3 for my home node. And as you can see, I've added some groups over here, a group here, and these are web page links. 
like one straight to my YouTube channel. Or one right to my buddy James's Superman 2 webpage. I cut one of my trainer nodes, his trainer nodes connected to his home node. There's All Star Link's webpage, and of course, hamradiolife.org. So how do we add that stuff? Well, I'm here to tell you how to do just that. Let's take a look. I logged into the node, into the web admin portal, right into the cockpit. I'm gonna go to terminal, and we're gonna go CD, Etsy, Allmon 3. Take a look around. So you'll notice in here we've got Allmon3.ini, custom.css, menu.ini, and web.ini. Hmm, uh, let's take a look at web.ini first. sudo nano web.ini. And there's a lot in here. So there's a bunch of different things that you can do. These are system commands. But if you notice down here in node overrides, these are the labels right here. See where I have 58176 Crusader Castle? That doesn't say that in my All-Star All Link server page on their website. So I customized it. So that said 58176 Crusader Castle. 58176 equals Crusader Castle. 576335. And what this does, all that does is change these labels. So this is in web.ini. Now, you see 2950 I added, it says unavailable. So I can come in here, go 2950 equals GMRS Live node WRUT923. Now, once I've got that in there, I'd like to put a little space between it and the next lines because I'm weird that way. Control X, yes to save, enter to exit, and then we need to do a sudo system control restart Almon 3 and then we can go back to Almon 3 and say hey what's going on here and it's gonna refresh and we're gonna see oh my goodness 2950 GMRS live no WRUT 923 Almon 3 to me is aesthetically pleasing it doesn't have all the same features as supermon 2 does but when you look at this on your phone you can actually manipulate it better so let me show you and there it is now you can see that i'm only seeing a list of nodes that little side menu to the left is not showing but if you hit the hamburger menu up in the upper right hand corner there it is and i can log in from right there Log in successful, and I can hit the drop down menu there, or that drop down menu, or click on any of the web links. But if I hit home, it takes me back to the nodes and it refreshes. And look at that, you know, I can hit the buttons. Oh, well, let's disconnect. Uh, well, let's just disconnect James for a minute, hit the little red X there. It says disconnect 57841, execute. Okay, so let's go back to the hamburger menu and log out. And let's go over to that duplex node that we've been having so much fun with this morning. And there it is as well. So let me hit the hamburger menu, log in, hit home. And I'm just, you know, manipulating this without very much trouble at all. Node five, seven. And I tell you what, it's just easier to see on the phone. We learned how to change those headers up there, but there were other things in that same directory. Let's take another look at them. You see we've got one that's called menu.ini. So let's go sudo nano menu.ini, hit enter. And we've got a lot of stuff here explaining what things do and what are they, why are they here. It's good to read this stuff, read all of it. But look at these stanzas I put in underneath. Does this look familiar at all? KD5FMU, type equals menu, Crusader Castle. These are the nodes inside that drop-down menu. I made one called AA5PD. 
type equals menu and that's the one entry I have I'll be adding more of those later and then these are you know the name of the stanza is the label the name of each stanza is the label for the button that goes in its place so if it's a type equals menu then it's a drop down but for an extended menu if it's a type equals single then it's a button that is most generally going to be a link see how that works I even have that one that goes straight to James's home node. Pretty stinking cool, right? So we can add one real quick. And let's just call it video test. And you notice I'm not putting a space like I did up here because I'm not sure how much it actually matters, but we're gonna we're gonna do it anyway. So directly underneath it, we're gonna go type equals single. And the label name will be Ham Radio 2.0 equals HTTP colon slash slash www dot ham or I think it's ham ham radio 2 dot com and we'll do a control X yes to save enter to exit and then we're gonna run that system control restart all mon three again come up here it's like hey what, what, what's going on refresh the page and you'll notice the button has showed up to ham radio 2.0 I can click on that and there we are live from the ham shack TV holy smokes who's that all right you kind of get the picture of what I was going for there adding little shortcut buttons now here's my wish and it doesn't do it yet I wish when I clicked on this that it would just open up a new page a new tab but it doesn't do that yet, but hey, I'll take it, man. This is cool stuff, I really like this. You can also alter this logo up here. I've done it once before, I'll do it in a separate video because it's a little tricky. We'll get back to that. So, having fun with your all-star node. One more thing I wanna show you, that was all Mon 3. This is Supermon 7.4. Yeah, I've been having a lot of fun with it. Thanks to Jeff, K3JRZ, and you should go over and check out, like, and subscribe his YouTube channel. K3JRZ on the air. Jeff is a super POTA master, but he's now into All Star Link and he showed me how to do some of this customization. It's a little tricky. It's a lot of give and take and it's being fine tuned. So if, when I can get it down to something that's just a little less difficult, <laughs> I, you really have to play with this image. And I want to get the dimensions right before I go telling everybody, hey, do it like this. But I think Jeff will come out with a video soon to help us out with that because he's a lot better at this than I am. But I've added these extra nodes like I showed you in the previous video. So this is pretty cool stuff. All Star Link is great, but it's even better with hotspotradios.com USB duplex repeater hotspot radio. I love this sucker. It's great. 190 bucks, small price to pay because you have a full duplex mini repeater right there in your home which could be in your car, but you can also get the Hotspot Radio USB. It's 98 bucks, y'all. Uh, a good friend of mine, KQ4CCM, Kevin, the truck and ham. He's got the Rag Chew Network. Kevin's got one of these in the truck that he runs, and it sounds amazing. It takes up little space. It doesn't take a lot of resources. You plug it into your Raspberry Pi 3 or 4, you're rocking in no time. Lots of options, so get on over there to hotspotradios.com and check them out, y'all. Hey, this is Freddie Mac, your ham radio crusader saying 73s, wishing all the good signals to be yours, and ham on, y'all. <laughs>